Welcome to another episode of God, Guns, and Common Sense. We have a little bit, a different background here, and that's because I'm outside enjoying this beautiful weather uh, at my RV. And if you can uh, see, it, it's a really awesome IV, RV. I've traveled across the country with it um, twice now. I've gone all the way across to the Pacific, and then I drove all the way back, uh, back to the Atlantic. It's a fantastic RV, but today, it's a little bit different because uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going saltwater fishing for the very first time and you guys are going to be there to watch the whole experience. I'm going to go for some striper bass and th the striper bass here in Massachusetts, particularly uh, Westport, Massachusetts and the Cape Cod Canal, the striper bass are just enormous fish. I got, I got this, uh, this 50 pound braid to go with it. And this is going to be really, really interesting to see how it all works out. And so here it is. We have our, our rod. This is uh, my first. This is my first uh, saltwater fish pole. I mean, look at how long, like the bottom of this thing is. I'm so used to fishing with like a uh, freshwater fish or fishing rod, which is right there. It's such a, a small. Uh, you can kind of see it right there. The handle is like really, really small compared to compared to this beast of a handle it's leverage I guess I can't tell it's it's probably centara and then like the then like the, the kind is like the puma I mean you guys pretty much get the idea we're just laying the spool over there sit on the ground and see how uh what's this guy ah, yeah yeah I was trying to get it so that it would it would go the same the same direction as this uh it would be the same to kind of wind it up in the in the same pattern, but uh, that's just getting caught up in like this little notch where you put the, the you put the uh, the string in when you're done with it. So we're just going with the flow. We're seeing what's going to happen, and I think we're just about ready to run. Yeah, you can see we're getting right down to the wire here. So I'm gonna finish this up. Ooh, all done. Nice. Check it out. Look at that. Bam. 150 yards of awesome braided 50 pound right. I had to look at the thing to tell you. Okay. That's not a stick. It's actually a tiny little inch one. He's just posing as a stick. I've never seen one get so stiff like that before. Come on, man. See it moving like that? What you gonna do? Bite my finger? Go ahead. Go ahead. Dude, look at him. Aggressive little guy. Check him out. I think he is trying to bite my finger. Check him out. He is kind of cool, actually. Look at the scales on that thing. It's like, I'm gonna get you. Alright, so I'm trying out this brand new knot. If we can get a little zoomed in. I'll make a... I'll make a short little description after because I want to see how this actually works. I don't want to show you how to make this thing and then all of a sudden it, it just doesn't really hold up and no I didn't catch my my pencil popper in the tree. I actually put it there on purpose so I could test it out. Let's pull uh, let's pull this. I love how long this thing is. I got the leverage on here. I saw pencil popper in the tree and it's just the thing is that thing is really, this thing is just nice and strong. All right, so that's nice and strong. And I guess the only thing left to do is go try it out. Pencil popper uh, made out of wood. I also got it at Dick Sporting. That's got such a nice color on it. And it's, it's just, uh, I think they're really gonna nail it. The guy that I was working with, he said that, uh, that you got a good lure and this should work out. So, so look how long this thing is. So yeah, it's about a nine foot, uh, nine foot fishing rod. And ooh, like a hundred bucks, 120 bucks. Can't go wrong with it. So uh, let's try it out. Look at the little black kitty in the window. Just looking at the pencil popper. Smelling it, see it. We're gonna catch it. 
how big this pencil popper is. That cat is a fully grown cat. Yeah, he wants to, he wants to get it, all right. Go back here. This thing is massive. And we have a three ounce weight on the end of it because uh, we're gonna let it drop down where all the, the cooler water is. The size of this thing is awesome. This is our very first uh, trip down to Gooseberry Island, which is in Westport, Massachusetts, where all these amazing, uh, fantastic fish are going to be. You know, on top of going down with um, all of our gear and everything, I'm absolutely going with this. This is a fantastic mosquito repellent. I have used this everywhere. It's called a thermocell. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. You go ahead and click on it and check it out for yourself. This is uh, only 20 bucks and it's well worth it. It actually stops mosquitoes from smelling and it is amazing. So go ahead and check it out for yourself. I use it all the time. So one of the things that I really, really love about Massachusetts is that we are really close to the ocean. The ocean pretty much has everything that we need in it. It's got, you know, it's got striper bass, it's got bluefish, and everybody that I talk to says that going saltwater fishing is much more enjoyable than, uh, than freshwater if you'd like to have a fish that fights. I'm definitely one of those people, so. God, I really love Google Maps as well. Like this, Google Maps is just <laughs> telling me exactly where to go and I had to rely on that for my last job for just driving all over the place. So once we get there, I'll show you around and uh, it's called Gooseberry Island. A good uh, buddy of mine that I work with goes fishing there all the time. So we will pretty much just set up camp and then uh, we'll see what happens. And so here we are. I apologize for the wind. It is slightly breezy, but I don't know how it's gonna turn out until I get the video, um, until I go back and actually see how the video plays. But we are here in Gooseberry Island in Westport, Massachusetts. Very lovely place. And I'm gonna be fishing in this direction. I'm gonna try because the other side was loaded with seaweed on the ground, but it was all over the place, so I couldn't really couldn't do anything so we're gonna try over here and uh, we'll see what happens now I do apologize for the the view I'm an idiot and I totally forgot to get the right strap so I can hold my camera sideways but we'll see what happens with this and uh, I will let you know first cast here we go oh, that was lousy That's better. That's a little farther. Let it go down to the bottom. You know, I've never held. I've never held any of these before. These are just so big. This uh this fishing rod. I can feel that it's it is hitting the bottom. And my lure, maybe my lure needs to be a little bit further away. God, that'd be awesome if I could catch this at something. I think we're gonna take our chances on the rocks as the tide is coming up. Damn, like right on it too. That would be crazy. Imagine if I, imagine if I caught something over there. Looks, it looks like something was moving over there. And then it pulled me off this rock. That would be that'd be, I, that'd be pretty cool. Wow, that piece of seaweed just slapped me in the face. 
as I brought this back in. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna move to that bridge because I just don't think it's deep enough over here. And I do think that may be a rock over there. I'll catch you on the flip side. As you can see here in the lovely town of Westport, it is starting to get dark out. Sunset's beautiful, weather is just beautiful. Uh, smell the ocean, the reflective colors of the water. It's really fantastic out here, so. So if I do catch anything, it might be when it's a little bit darker. And I will let you know. Thanks for tuning in guys, I love every single one of you. Alright, so I did not catch anything on that bridge. It started to get really, really dark and I stayed out till, uh, I stayed out till about 11 o'clock at night and um, it, it, it was just getting to a point where I'm like, I've been out here since 7 and I just want to get something and, and then all of a sudden, you know, as I was out there, <laughs> right before it got a little dark I had taken my um I took my rod and I forgot I did the dumbest thing ever and I forgot to set the reel so that when I went to cast it I it, it, it wasn't going anywhere so there was just momentum and it slapped on the bridge on the rail of the bridge whatever and I was like, no, I thought I broke my rod. And I was like, oh my God, I just, I can't believe I did this. It was so dumb. But the weight uh, that was attached to it and the pencil popper, which is like 17 bucks, it's the weight snapped the, the line. And then I watched the pencil popper just like fall in the water and it didn't sink with the weight on it. So I'm like, oh, I guess I bought a top water one. <laughs> I didn't know. But I'm like, you know, we're just messing around. We're trying these things. So so next time I'll just get one. I'll just get one for the surface and one for um, uh, going down. I'll, I'll figure it out. But anyway, it was fun trying to get out there and just trying some saltwater fishing. So, guys, thank you uh, so much for watching this. Um, leave a comment and uh, please be patient. I will be going back out there and there are some amazingly massive striper fish out there They're, they are so big i promise you that when i get one i'm going to make a nice awesome video about it and you're going to be blown away by how big these things are so thanks for tuning in and i will see you on the next video